So we can work an example. There I'm giving you a stress tensor, a, a principal stress tensor. So those, those are the principal stress directions for reverse faulting scenario. And I'm giving you the three angles that, so how this is oriented with respect to, um, with respect to the geographic coordinate system. So in this case, it's, since beta and gamma are zero, it's, it's basically just a rotation in the plane. Right, so from, from SH max is 90 degrees from north. Right? And that's all, all it is. So it's just a rotation in the plane. Right? And so then what we want to do is we want to find those minimum and maximum tangential stress for an open hole well. Oh, uh, I guess I should point out in these equations, this delta P is the difference between the pressure in the well and the pore pressure. So if you're drilling and you have mud in there, then this could be something different than the pore pressure. But if it's open hole, then it's just the pore pressure. Right? And I guess you should, yeah, it's the magnitude of this guy, the absolute value. So we want to find the maximum minimum tangential stress for an open hole well that is oriented 20 degrees from north and deviated 20 degrees from vertical at a depth of 2 kilometers. And we're going to assume a hydrostatic pore pressure gradient and a Poisson ratio of 0.2. So that means, you, you know, remember that, remember our G, right? It's this matrix that's a function of alpha, beta, and gamma. Right? So we have to work out all those components. And then we, we use that to rotate this into the geographic stress. And then from the geographic stress, we use another rotation, the one we just went through the derivation, RB. And we take that into the borehole. And then we use the borehole stresses are in Cartesian coordinates. We want to take those into the polar coordinates of the, cylindric of the cylindrical borehole. And then we use those to compute the maximum and minimum tangential stresses. So, you know, here's a here's a marker. Austin, you come to the board and start on that. I'm kidding, obviously. <laughs> I would never work that by hand. So what am I going to do? Huh? I'm going to code it up, right? Well, it turns out that even, you know, even just writing the code is just, you know, it would take me a long time to type all this out in class because I have to type out, I, you know, this is, the ma this is just the rotation matrix, right? So this is, I wrote a function, compute SG, that takes arguments S, so it takes in the principal stresses and the angles, and then it and then it outputs SG. So this is this rotates me from the principal stresses into the geographic stresses, right? But I didn't want to waste time in class. I mean, it took me 15 minutes just to type that thing, right? So, so I, I, I just have this RG, and then it's just simply R, RG transpose S RG, okay? So then I have RG, and I want to go from there into the borehole, right? So this is the RB, the one we derived at the beginning of class. Not, not as bad as that one, right? There's only two angles, theta and phi, right? And so then I, then I want to, 
So then what I do is, again, this takes me all the way there. So you notice there's an extra argument, right? So I, I say compute SB. The input is actually the principal stress, and then it has the, the angles to take me to the geographic coordinate system, and then the angles that take me to the borrow. So I feed those in as arguments to my function. I compute RB. I compute SG using that function. So I just pass S and the angles into here. Right? Maybe I should be, I should probably be uh, using this so we get it on the recording. All right, so I pass S and angles right into, right into this to compute SG. So now I have the geographic stress, and then I take that into the borehole with this. So this is just RB, SG, RB, T. All right. And so what this function returns is the stress tensor in the borehole. All right. Okay. So why it does that? Let's uh, create our stress tensor. This was given in the problem statement, right? It's 30, 0, 0, 0, 25, 0, 0, 0, 20. <coughs> okay. And so we can use that then. So if we say SB, so the stress in the borehole, we're going to say compute SB, right? I'm going to feed in S, and then angles G are the three angles, and they were 90, 0, and 0 from the problem statement, right? And then angles B were 20 and 20 from the problem statement, right? And just like that, I have the stress tensor. Now, you notice this is a full tensor, right? It's a full, full matrix. It is symmetric. And it is symmetric, but it's it's fully populated. Whereas what when, what we started with was diagonal, right? So the principal stresses into the into the uh, geographic coordinate system, and then into the borehole coordinate system. So now we have the stress the, in the the Cartesian stresses in the borehole coordinate system, and then if we go back up here. I have a function that says compute the wellbore stress. So this function computes the wellbore stress. And it's nothing more than it just coding up those equations. So it just stress zz, stress theta, theta, tau, theta z, uh, stress rr, sigma rr. Right? It's just coding up those equations and returning the output. Uh, one subtlety for those of you who use MATLAB, this is Python. Python is uh, zero index based. So the first entry in array is zero, not one. And, and so in MATLAB, it's one, right? So in MATLAB, this would be S11 minus S22, right? Here it's S00 minus S11. Because <coughs> So that's a subtlety. If you if you wanted to convert this into a MATLAB code, make sure you are aware of that. 
All real programming languages are zero based, by the way. There's some good reasons why. Anyway. Um, okay, so we, we compute from the Cartesian stresses, we convert into uh, the wellbore stress pol in the co polar coordinate system, and then with that we can compute the uh, minimum tangent stress and the, and the max. Actually, this should be. Uh, It should be maximum. Actually, that should be minimum, and this should be maximum. Okay. Okay. So remember, what we computed here was SB. What we need to send in here is SB effective, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to define SB effective to be S minus the pore pressure, which I said was hydrostatic. And I said we're, we're going to do this computation at a depth of 2 kilometers. So hydrostatic pore pressure gradient is 10, kilo, 10 megapascal per kilometer, 2 kilometers, so 20. 20 megapascals. Uh, by the way, I guess I should have mentioned that the original stress was in megapascal. Right? So, so S minus 20 times the identity matrix and then we should be able to say S min equals to compute minimum tangent stress SB effective. I said a Poisson ratio of 0.2. Uh, theta. So theta is, is the angle around the borehole, right? So, um, so if we're looking down the borehole, theta is this is this angle. Okay, so we'll start this at zero, and what was the, the last thing is delta P, all right, so uh, delta P is just 20 because I set an open hole, right, so the pore pressure minus zero, uh, okay. So S min is equal to that, and S max is equal to that. All right. So but that doesn't give us enough information to know that the wellbore is going to fail, right? Because it's, we, just, we just computed it at one location, right, in the wellbore. So, you know, what we should probably do is define theta to go from 0 to, well, let's do a, a lens space between 0 and 360 in 100 increments and then we can then we can solve our um, well, let's see um, if I would have coded this a little bit different I could have done it a little bit easier but I'm going to have to use a a loop here. So I'm going to say um, x max is whatever this guy computes for i for i in theta.
So then now we have, you know, a whole array of values around the borehole. And then the easiest way to visualize that would be to uh, say, plot theta and s max. So then, you know, if we had a, if we had, for example, a, a, the strength of the rock was 40 MPA, then, you know, we could have a potential for breakout. In, in those in those regions. Okay?